Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Kudo, and sometimes I'm out a little while, and I hear something that just catches my ear, and I wonder, wait a minute. So $400 million that was sitting in a plane, all marked in cash, just around the same time those hostages were released earlier this year. Coincidental, odd, not exactly ransom. Don't worry about it. Then we learn over the course of the next 19 days or so, another $1.3 billion in cash paid to Iran in cash. That is $1.7 billion in cash. And, and even thick skulls like my own start wondering, that's odd. It got to be a very hot and heated point in Washington today. Take a look. We asked about the specifics of the payments in January, and we're told that there was never, ever going to, no one would ever tell us. Well, again, I mean, we, that we, what you got was our standard answer, which is true, that we protect the confidentiality of these you, arrangements. You don't. I'm you, just asking you, if, you if, just, if, well, from look, the communications Matt, piece so of Matt, this alone, mm -hmm. if you had it all to do over again, you'd do it exactly the same way? Um, or was there a, a mistake made in this overabundance of caution and this dribbling out of details? Uh, I wouldn't call it a mistake. The guy with those obnoxious questions at the end there is our own James Rosen. He joins us on the phone. James, did you get any satisfactory answers there? Well, Neil, to be clear, and for the purposes of the record, I was only one of two individuals asking obnoxious questions there. That was also my colleague, Matt Lee, of the Associated Press. And the answer is no. There's still a lot of questions remaining about the United States payment to Iran of what it says was $1.7 billion as a total payment uh, including the original principal that we owed Iran from a long-standing dispute over assets of theirs that we froze back in the 1970s, and interest. It was $400 million, the original payment that we owed, plus $1.3 billion in interest that we agreed to pay uh, to settle this long-standing claim. The Obama administration says we would have lost a much larger judgment uh, if we had let this go to the international tribunals. Uh, only today, for the first time, as the Obama administration acknowledged that the three payments for the totaling $1.7 billion were made in cash, in hard foreign currency, uh, only in response really to uh, a pair of bombshell reports from the Wall Street Journal and dogged questioning by uh, reporters there in that State Department briefing room. Uh, and even today, uh, State Department spokesman Mark Toner had no answers when I asked him about the statutory authority, the legal requirements for such a payment. And I read to him chapter and verse from the Federal Code, which states that uh, from this particular fund from which the $1.3 billion was drawn, it's called the Judgment Fund of the Treasury Department, uh, that the codes and the regulations state that they are only to be made by electronic funds transfer or if a waiver is sought and received by check. There's nothing in the law that says it can be made in cash. Mr. Toner had no answer for that as to whether a, a waiver was sought in this case. And likewise, the website of the Judgment Fund on the Treasury Department's website shows 13 payments totaling that $1.3 in interest that we owed uh, on, on the 19th of January of this year. But if you look at it closely, there's a 14th payment on the same date, using the same controlling case file number, meaning it's attached to this deal with Iran, of $10.4 million. And that takes us over the $1.7 billion total settlement figure, and they had no answer for what that $10.4 million is about either. Wow. James, thank you very, very much. James Rosen, Congressman Michael McCall now, Chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee. It's the cash part. Forget about the total amount of it, Congressman, that's raising questions here. Normally, that kind of reminds folks of the Sopranos or sort of a deal, uh, all but, but in, in, in brief cases. But, but what do you make of that? Well, I mean, the, the optics are horrible for the administration to have plane loads of untraceable foreign currency uh, in pallets of cash, uh, euro, uh, Swiss, uh, you know, currency. Um, I mean, it, it, it would be illegal for them to send it by U.S. currency. So what do they do? They circumvent that requirement and do it by untraceable foreign currency. This thing just smells really bad. And the fact that they uh, it would deny that this is a ransom payment when the hostages were literally sitting on the tarmac and have, have told us that uh, until the planes landed with the cash, only until then were they released by the Iranians. And remember what kind of government we're dealing with, the largest state sponsor of terror. Would it have made any difference then if it was electronically transferred or would there be actually a trail, electronic trail to that? I mean, this would be just as... I guess suspicious, but what do you know why that route was never chosen? Well, because again, uh, there were no electronic, electronic wire transfers set up. 
uh, between the United States and Iran because they have been the largest state sponsor of terror. We can't exchange the cash uh, in, in U.S. currency through wire uh, because of the law. So they circumvented the law by using untraceable foreign cash. And I think that's something that Congress have, I guess they could have, have had, knowing a little bit about this, and, and countries and rogue governments that, uh, through a third party that was never entertained, hence the cash. But do you know or ever remember, sir, a time in history where we have dispense that much cash to a foreign entity uh, in that short a time, especially this way, in cash? Uh, not that I can recall in, in, in not only recent history, but in the history of the United States. And, and look who we're dealing with. And since the time we uh, gave them this money, three more hostages have been taken. So uh, that's what's, you know, this is spurring more bad behavior on the part of Iran. They are, uh, they are provoking our ships in the Persian Gulf. Uh, they took the Russian S-300s, uh, the missiles, and put them around their nuclear facilities since this time. Uh, this is not uh, encouraging good behavior you know, on the part of Iran. This whole thing just smells bad. We're gonna be looking at this uh, in the Congress. And in terms of the legitimacy, remember the Justice Department, uh, the administration's own lawyers advised against this action. And I think for many of the reasons your prior guest uh, uh, very art, in a very art, articulate way uh, talked about. Uh, I think this is uh, really one of the biggest scandals to launder money to Iran in exchange for hostages to the largest state sponsor. And, and guess where that money's gonna go towards? This, from my perspective as Homeland Security Chair, that's gonna go to, f to fund the Quds Force operations which have killed hundreds of Americans in Iraq uh, and Hezbollah operations around the world uh, to kill uh, both Americans and our allies and our interests. All right, Chairman, thank you very, very much. Uh, Michael McCall, Fine State of Texas, House Homeland Security. Thanks, Neil. Chairman, uh, you hear what the House wants to do with regarding uh, this uh, little uh, transaction, $1.7 billion worth. Now looking at separately the Clinton email controversy, the House Committee now wants to know exactly the pattern here and how many, and for that matter, uh, just more of what we don't know. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Harridge is more on that. Hey, Catherine. Well, thank you, Neil. In this letter to the U.S. Attorney here in Washington, Republican Committee Chairman Jason Chaffetz writes, quote, the department, that's the Justice Department, should investigate and determine whether Secretary Clinton or her employees and contractors violated statutes that prohibit destruction of records and obstruction of congressional inquiries and concealment or cover-up of evidence material to a congressional investigation. Speaking to Fox this morning, the congressman said his committee will continue to investigate and hold hearings. The fact of the matter is they did not look at this and the House of Representatives also, a branch of government, also gets to look into this. Of course we're going to do hearings. We're going to get to the truth of this. Possible charge of obstruction would hinge on timing and March 2015 is emerging as a key month. On the third of that month, a preservation order was issued for the Clinton emails. There was also a subpoena from the House Benghazi Committee for Records. Then on March 25th, the FBI found Clinton's legal team held a conference call with the Denver firm that was managing the Clinton server. And in the same time frame, records were electronically shredded. If destruction occurred after Congress issued a subpoena for information, it occurred a day later, two days later, a week later, why did it occur then? Then it becomes more curious and perhaps more relevant. Asked about the obstruction allegation, Clinton told reporters yesterday that she's not concerned, but it's important to note for context that this is an issue that the FBI director said in testimony they did not examine in their investigation of the mishandling of classified information, Neil. All right, Catherine Harris, thank you very, very much. You're Donald welcome. Trump earlier today saying that uh, he doesn't know, frankly, what is worse, uh, not knowing whether the information you have is potentially criminal or just not remembering. Fox News Senior Judicial Analyst Judge Andrew DiPolitano back with us right now. Judge, what do you make of this? I think that Mrs. Clinton is uh, on the verge of skating yet again, Neil, because as Catherine just reported, the FBI was aware of the destruction of this electronic equipment, including the loss of a laptop belonging to one of her aides and the intentional destruction of about three or four of her 13 Blackberries. 
at the time it was investigating her failure to secure state secrets, and the FBI chose not to investigate this. This is the same FBI that was handcuffed throughout her entire investigation, that presented nothing to a grand jury, that got no subpoenas, that issued no uh, search warrants, that probably decided from the outset to do as it was told, which was to exonerate Hillary Clinton. Do you get a sense, Judge, that um, leaving the polls aside and whether this is resonating, uh, it does keep Hillary Clinton's negatives high. Uh, she says everything is out there, released out there. She's been very forthcoming since all these investigations uh, and, and that there's nothing untoward or illegal. And the proof is that the FBI did not decide to, 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 to punish her. What do you make of that? I think there's two ways that the public will look at this. One way is, oh, well, it's the Clintons. They're at it again. They always get away with this stuff and they always survive these scandals. And let's talk about issues that are more relevant. The other is, we have a person whose judgment is profoundly deficient, whose willingness to uh, evade and avoid the law for her own venal purposes is well documented. Is she competent? Is she qualified? Is she worthy of being president of the United States? People's views will fall into one of those two camps. Uh, Neil, I'm not so convinced. I'm hardly a fan of hers, but I'm not so convinced that this drip, drip, drip actually hurts her. I think people are tired of hearing it. What upsets me the most is that law enforcement did not take this seriously. The public safety is at risk when someone does to national secrets what she did and destroys records in order to avoid a prosecution. And the rule of law is not upheld. Wow. I forgot how smart you were, Judge. I almost uh, forgot how young you look, by the way. God bless you. God Welcome bless back. You. And by the way, thank you for your very kind no, emails in my apps. I appreciate that. Pleasure. Judge Anna Napolitano, uh, by the way, can you think the Federal Reserve can ever become a hot election button issue? What have I told you? It already is. To Ron Paul, who says, about time. After this.